1964, I graduated from high school. And within 24 hours of my actual graduation, I found myself boarding an airplane with a one-way ticket and $40 going to the Hawaiian Islands. Why? <laughs> you have to ask yourself, why would I leave home not knowing anybody in Hawaii, not having a job or a place to stay, where I get on an airline, fly there with no way back and virtually no money. $40 is only going to last me a couple days in Hawaii, even back then in the 1960s. But I had this draw. It always felt like I had to return, quote unquote, to the islands, even though I'd never been there. I felt this pull all my life about the Hawaiian Islands, and I really didn't know that much about it. And so when I got the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, uh, my money was running out very, very quickly, I had uh, one contact. My little sister, she said, well, when you go over there, there's, in case something happens, uh, my boyfriend, uh, his grandfather lives there, and he's some kind of uh, kahuna or something, and he lives right there in, in Hawaii, Honolulu area. So I had his uh, address. It's kind of like an emergency thing, except this guy never met me, didn't know me, didn't know anything about me. And, and so I uh, decided after I was there a couple days to uh, take out the address, and I was staying on this corner right across the street from where I had been sleeping on the floor of a friend's hotel room for $10 a night. Um, and and I asked this first guy I saw, I says, uh, where's Lily Lukiani Avenue? And I gave him the address. And he looked at me and he says, look up at the sign. I looked up the sign. That was the exact corner. Unspeknownst to me is I actually was staying within 100 feet of the apartment building that he was in. It was just right adjacent to this hotel I was at. And so I walked over and I, I looked at the address and it was apartment number two. And I knocked on the door. Door opens and this unique man answers the door. He was shorter than me, big bulgy eyes, dark skin, and he had that look, and he just stared at me. <laughs> well, this turned out, this was uh, David K. Bray, better known as Daddy, or Big Daddy. And he was the eminent kahuna uh, at that time. In fact, at that century, in the 60s, he was, he was the guy. And I found out later that any time they were going to build a road or a building in Hawaii or even do a movie, like Ride the Wild Surf was being filmed there when I was there and or just before I got there, and he blessed the surf and he got paid $300. And, uh, and then he got paid to bless the set and everything for uh, In Harm's Way, a John Wayne movie. And so he was already a pretty established guy. And he, he wrote a bunch of history books and he... Uh, was pretty nationally and internationally known as the Big Kahuna. I didn't know any of this when he answered the door. And there he was, this little man, little in height, but not in his aura and his presence. And he was just staring at me. <laughs> and I'm 18 years old, and he's like 60, 66, something like that. And I tell him that uh, I'm there, I got no place to go, that his grandson had given my daughter, my uh, sister, the address in case I got in trouble that I could contact him. And then he just looked at me, he stared at me and he says, I've been expecting you. I know who you are. <laughs> what? <laughs> but nobody told him anything and his grandson didn't tell him anything. And so I didn't understand any of that. So he invited me in and I had some, some iced tea and and some fruit, and, and we began a, a long conversation, which turned out to be the beginning of many long conversations that summer. He turned out he'd been looking for an apprentice, somebody that could carry on his teachings and carry forth uh, what he had been trying to uh, educate the Hawaiians and, and, and others on, the, the Kahuna religion. And he just kept staring at me and looking at me. I go, what's, what's going on? He says, he says, well, 
you're not really going to believe this, he says, but, uh, uh, and I said, well, try me. And he goes, uh, in a previous lifetime, you wore the big cajon on this island, back back when King Kamehameha was here, and and uh, and he looked at me and he says, and I was your apprentice, and everything I've learned in previous lifetimes about being a cajon, I've learned from you. Now I'm an 18 year old kid, and I'm listening to this stuff, and I'm going, yeah, okay, fine, okay, that's interesting. But this guy's in his 60s. He's well established. There's books about him, and there's he's written articles, and there's been countless news stories and uh, all kinds of articles and things and profiles on him and television and everything else. And he's telling me that I basically was his teacher in the past, and that he would now was going to give me all that knowledge that he had this lifetime, and eventually turn over everything when he died. Uh, the following, the, all the property and things that he owned and such. And, and I really wasn't interested. But I hung around, and he helped get me jobs, and I stayed on the island a long time. But I saw a lot of things that he did. And at the time, they were filming a movie, a jo auto premature movie called In Harm's Way, which uh, they were filming in 1964. I think it came out a year or two later. And it had John Wayne and uh, had a... Kirk Douglas and all kinds of great people in the movie. Can't remember the cast, but Otto Preminger and some of the people from the uh, the movie were coming to his apartment at nights to do chanting and do spiritual stuff and uh, cast spells and do all kinds of stuff. And uh, I noticed that uh, when I was talking to him, he'd be mentioning all these famous people that have come and visited him, which I won't mention their names. Uh, but a lot of people that were what I believe to be really totally 100% Christians were coming to him as well. I also noticed something else that uh, when he talked about casting spells and curses and what he called a kahuna curse, uh, that he'd used this power in the past and very recently as I was talking to him, he was still using some of these powers for what I call the dark side. Uh, when I was there, there was some man that cheated him on some kind of debt or something, and he told the guy he better pay off by a certain date or he was going to put a curse on the guy, and the guy didn't pay off, and he put a curse on the guy and did some chanting, and next thing you know, the next morning the guy, he owns a restaurant, and his refrigerator breaks down, so he loses all the food in the refrigerator, stove catches on fire, so he has a stove a fire in the stove and in the back kitchen. He has a heart attack that afternoon. He's in the hospital, and he's getting a call that afternoon from the hospital from this guy saying, take the curse off, take the curse off. The guy totally 100% believed in it. It was killing his business. It was killing him. But he told me stories about how he could chant, and he had chanted people well, and he could chant people to their death. And I heard other people tell me, uh, stories to back up what he said. But it was a part of me that, that saw all this kahunism, uh, which is a, a beautiful thing if done right and proper. Um, there's a lot of power there. There's a lot of energy there. But basically, it's very close, closely suited. As, as I found out when I went to India and I, I talked to uh, a guru there, he told me that the kahuna religion is very similar to the Nath tradition in India different names, different things, but basically it's the same energy runs through both of them. And through chanting, through prayers, through special things that they did, they could create things, they could change things, they could alter reality. All these things were very real. And uh, when I got time finally to go, I decided that uh, this was not for me. And, uh, and he looked at me and he says, uh, I'm not going to be seeing you again. And he says, uh, he says, there's only one person in this world I'm afraid of. Only one person has more power than me. And that's kind of like the look I gave him. And he goes, that's you. He says, so you're safe because I would never attack you because it would be a, a journey I wouldn't want to take. It would be harmful to myself. And I'm going... 
So I thought it was kind of odd. So I guess he was picking up on the fact that I was kind of judging him and judging what he was doing. There was a part of me that was a little disappointed, realizing he had the power to heal, the power to evolve and change people. And yet once in a while he'd get into these dark areas and he'd use those same very powers for negative results. And that's what we had an issue over, and that's why I decided to leave. And I found out years later when I was in Vietnam, and I, and I paid for my mother to come to uh, Tokyo, Japan, for my R&R &R to meet me there, and I paid for it. She'd never been out of the country before. And spent time when she traveled back to the United States. She had a stopover in Hawaii, and she got together with, uh, with uh, Daddy Bray and Apparently had a relationship till he died, and I didn't know about it till her death. But he died in 1966, two or three years after, about three years, I think, after I was there. I was there in 64, he died about 1966 or 67. And uh, there's a lot of books written about him. A lot of people claim to have studied under him. He told me at the time that uh, he had no other apprentice. And that uh, a lot of people wanted to be his apprentice. A lot of people wanted to learn what he had to teach. But my main thing in telling this story is that a lot of people go out there and they're seeking the shaman. They're seeking the kahuna. They're seeking the witch doctor. They're, they're seeking this medicine man. They're seeking all these things. Realize that this power cuts both ways. And that a lot of very, very powerful people out there be they kahunas, gurus, shamans, whatever. Power works both directions. And unless you're focused on the light and keeping it in the light, there's a great danger. So that's my words to the wise. Anyway, that's David K. Bray, Big Daddy. Uh, if you want to read about him, he's in many books. Uh, and you can go online, you can check on him. But... Uh, that was my experience with uh, Kahuna, and uh, to this very day I still see his face and his eyes, and it's very interesting because he had that same look that later on in life, about 50 some years later, I found a guru in India that had that same look. There's something about the eyes. It's just it. There's something about the eyes that these great spiritual beings have. There's power. Anyway, aloha, blessings, and peace.